Good morning. Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church's live stream. Our mission at Mount Zion takes its inspiration from Ezekiel 34, 16. I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed. With the help of modern technology, we can gather and virtually praise, worship, and minister God's Word. If this is your first time tuning in, we would like to give you a special welcome. You could have picked any church's live stream, but you chose ours, and we thank you for that. Our ministry is to spread God's Word throughout the world, whether it be in person at our church or virtually on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share us online at MountZionHudson.org and on social media via Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch TV. Please share this with your family and friends, and thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it, and we appreciate you. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, several announcements I want to highlight for you. Notice a couple meetings coming up today. Notice Deacon's meeting today at 4. Deacon's meeting today at 4. Also, Safety and Security is meeting with the Stewardship Committee today at 6. So Safety and Security and Stewardship Committee meeting to get together today at 6. You see under your order of worship, the uh, reading plan. We're trying to read through the Word of God together. Uh, you see what day we're on. Uh, keep up with us. If you haven't joined us, we invite you to join us uh, just as we read God's Word together and discover its truths. Then you see in the middle of your bulletin that we'll have a special Sunday night singing on January 30th. You're invited to be part of that. If you want to sing or play an instrument or do a sign language song, it doesn't matter. Come share some of your talents you have. Um, but if you will, call the church office to let us know. So that's coming up the last Sunday of the month. You see our Lottie Moon Christmas offering keep ticking up little by little. So grateful for those that have given. I know we have another dove today to put up on the tree. Don't we have another dove today? There we go. You see our goal, uh, our, our giving to date is $22,470.79. Thank you so much for giving to that. Uh, it's such an important, important uh, ministry offering, so we thank you for that. Also, several other activities coming up. You see that the XYZ are having dinner and bingo on the 23rd. XYZ dinner and bingo, please make note of that. And then in your bulletin, you see the orange insert about some youth and children's activities. Uh, notice the family skate night. The, the times for that is actually 4 to 6. It says... 5.30, that's just a misprint, but the times are 4 to 6 for the children's uh, skate, family skate night. And also notice the bowling and putt-putt for the youth that went is on that as well. And then we do have this insert about our food closet. I don't know if you know, but we have a food closet and we give out food every Wednesday from 9 to 11. As you see in here, we average 10 to 12 bags. I think last week we gave out 20-some bags. I know the, had to go, they had to go to the closet and refill bags several times. And each one of those bags costs anywhere from $15 to $20. So we're giving a couple hundred to $300 of food away to our community every week. And so we're asking for help as our funds have gotten lower and our closet's gotten a little low. We need your help. You can see the items we need. You can also give uh, money donation, greatly appreciated. But it's a great outreach we have here at our church and invite you to join us so that we can continue to reach out and help people with that. Then also you see the information, the names of those that we are, are going to remember today. I'll explain more families, uh, how we'll do that. Uh, but one correction, Goldie Harrington is the name of Sarah Krause's mother. It's not Goldie Hahn, but Goldie Harrington. Um, so if you want to make that note, yeah. Kurt Russell will not show up today, so well, that's Goldie Harrington. Besides these, are there any other announcements or corrections this morning? There's sign-ups in the Welcome Center for the youth and the children's events. So please sign up so we can plan accordingly. Thank you, Chris. Any other announcements or corrections? Well, let's do some celebrating today. Is there any birthdays today or this past week? Any birthdays? <laughs> Happy birthday. What about any anniversaries today or this past week? Any anniversaries? Happy anniversary. Once again, thank you so much for your presence. I don't know if you've heard, but God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. He is a truly, truly good God. Thank you for coming to worship him and to join your brothers and sisters in doing so this morning. Let's stand and just wave at each other and say it's great to see you this morning.
Well, it's a joy for me to look out among the congregation and see all of you this morning. Uh, I hope you don't get tired of me telling you just a little bit about the people who writes our hymns. But this morning, uh, James Small was a minister in the Scottish Free Church, and he loved to write hymns. This hymn, originally called Jesus a Friend, was published in 1863. This hymn is full of theological truths. From our standpoint, we sing, I have found a friend. But the truth is, he loved me ere I knew him, and he drew me with the cords of love. Obviously, it is Jesus who initiates this friendship. The final stanza concludes with lines that recall Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mr. Small concludes, I am his forever, and such a friend is truly worth singing about. I found this friend well over 70 years ago, and I hope that you have. So let's sing Mr. Small's hymn, I Found a Friend, Oh, Such a Friend. I found a friend As we enter into this time of remembrance now, I ask you to do a couple things as we have these families come forward. I ask that you be praying for them, that you're praying for them over the feelings they're feeling, over the weeks, the months, the years to come. I ask that you be praying for them as how you can serve them and help them and be united with them in their time of loss, but also a time of celebration 
of the homecoming of, of many of these saints who've gone on to be with the Lord. Now what we'll do is in a moment I'll, I'll call the name of those that passed on. As I have done that, then I invite that family to come forward. And as you come forward, I'll handle, hand you a candle. And uh, family, if you just hold the candle, then I'll light the candle for you and take it back from you and, and set it down. All right? So let's just uh, open up in prayer now as we begin this time. Let's pray. God, we come now just to a special time, a special time of remembering those incredible family members that you put in our lives who have greatly affected our lives, who have loved us and helped us and supported us and prayed for us, those family members that I'm sure we miss dearly, but those that have known you, God, that we celebrate that have gone home to be with you in a place called heaven. And so, God, I pray that this time is just a time of remembrance, a time of celebration of the homecoming of saints. A time where as a body of Christ we can come together and pray for those who've lost these loved ones. God, we ask you to just pour your presence on us in a mighty way. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It's in Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Hassie Davis. Mary Sue Drum. Tom Dula. Doris Eckerd. Clyde Duncan. Betty Edstrom.
Drenda Goodell. Goldie Harrington. Carol Jean Holmes. Dwight Joplin. Sharon McDowell. Gary Miller. Francis Moore. Thomas Larry Presley.
Dorothy Sparks. Ernie Teague. Joyce Warren. Patricia Williams. Gaither Withers. Ray Woods. My final candle we light in honor of those uh, family members of church members who weren't able to be here who aren't represented. You know, as we look at here all these candles, as you see all these families and friends have come forward, death touches us all, does it not? It's amazing how many amazing people we've lost this past year. 
But the good news is, just as these lights burn, the light of Jesus Christ always burns. And it burns in the darkness, and it chases away that darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it, but yet the light is here, that eternal light. So let us pray now and be thankful for that eternal light. Let us pray. God, it's always humbling to see here in our church family how many have experienced seasons of loss, seasons of toughness. And God, we thank you for their presence here and we thank you for the love they have. We ask that this morning be a special time that we light these candles and and it's just a small symbolic thing, but the symbol of the lights, let it be ever presence in our hearts. Let us know that, that death and darkness does not overcome and it does not win, but light does. That God, you're victorious. So help these families, help these friends feel your victory now. And knowing their loved one can go home and be in that eternal light. So God, be with us. Shine your light here among your people now. Let us feel your presence. Lead us and guide us, God. We ask for comfort. We ask for strength. We ask for love. Most of all, we ask just for you. Because you're all those things. God, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' holy and precious and eternal name we pray. Amen. This song that we're going to sing this morning is uh, Lord, I Need You. Um, and it's a song I'm sure that many, if not all of you, are familiar with. But there's a passage of scripture that I want to share with you this morning. It's 2 Corinthians 12, it's verse 9. It says this, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And that's what this song talks about. This song tells us, and this verse tells us, that uh, God, we, are, we are in need of something because we are weak. And that, that thing that we need and that person that we need is Jesus. And so let's stand and sing together, uh, Lord, I need you. <coughs>
And let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to come to you now and thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and worship you. We'd like to thank you for the day you've given us, and we'd like to lift up our country as we uh, try to get str struggle through these ordeals that we're going through, that you just put us back on the right track. Lord, we'd like to lift up all those that are sick and sad that you'll be with them and heal and comfort. And Lord, we just thank you all for all you do for us. You're a good God, and we love you, and we thank you for it. And we just like to lift up our church as we seek to seek an associate pastor to just lead us to the right person for the job. And Lord, we just ask for these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Say, it's a good thing to know, isn't it? It's a good thing to know. Well, today I want to share a scripture, a passage with you that has often brought me great comfort in my time of needs. It's found in, in John chapter 11. That's John chapter 11. Uh, we'll be skipping around for a few different verses, but what I want you to know as we look at John 11, and what I want you to look for is this, that God loves you, that God wants to comfort you, that God is the resurrection of life. These have bring me great thoughts while I've seen this passage and read this passage. And so I want us to look at this passage together. Everybody turn, if you will, if you have your Bible, to John chapter 11. Let's look at the first four verses. We're going to jump straight into it. Look at verses 1 through 4. It says, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Here, verse 4. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Let's pause right there in, in verse 4, and let's hold on for a second and look at something. Look what verse 4 says. Jesus says, this sickness will not end in death. Well, I don't know about you, but if I go to chapter 11, verse 1, the title of this part of Scripture, for me, says the death of Lazarus. So how will this not end in death? If the thing's called the death of Lazarus, if I know, if I've read the story that Lazarus is going to die, is Jesus wrong? Is Jesus confused? Does he, he not know something? No, here's the thing with Jesus. When you have a relationship with Jesus, as Lazarus does, death is not the end. I don't think you heard me because that's something worth getting excited about. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, death is not the end. Is that not good news this morning? Death is not the end, and that's what Jesus is talking about. Lazarus will die. His body will die, but he will ultimately live. And the story is not about death, but it's about resurrection. It's about Lazarus being resurrected. See, if we have that relationship with Jesus Christ, death has lost. I love a great verse. I hope you're familiar with it. It's 1 Corinthians 15. It says this, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, for us, as we gather and we see these lights and we look at these candles, it can give us a sense of defeat when we lose loved ones. But here's the thing. Any that die in a relationship with Jesus Christ, death is but the doorway to the eternal light, which is God himself. Isn't that great news? That's why we call deaths of saints and believers celebrations of life. We celebrate their life and, oh, hear me, we're going to miss them and we're going to talk about that. It's not about not missing them. It's not about being sad. We, can, we are right to feel those emotions. But when a believer in Christ dies, that is a victory in Jesus Christ, not a defeat. Death does not win. See, look at what happens in verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. He loved them, right? Just as he loves us. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Whoa, hold, hold on. Jesus loves us. Jesus is all about life. So Jesus finds out about Lazarus and he's sick and he rushes off. Does he leave immediately? What does Jesus do? He hangs out for a couple days. Whoa. This, this is when it can be a little confusing. Why in the world would Jesus not rush off? The verse right before that says how much he loved Mar Mary and Martha and Lazarus. I mean, he cares about them. He's going to do something important, but he doesn't rush off. Do you notice sometimes God doesn't respond how we think he should. God doesn't respond how we want him to. I guarantee these candles represented it have been prayed over many times about healing. 
I'm sure these are, these are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers who we prayed for God to bring healing. Yet in his time, he allowed them to pass. How can we reconcile that with the brain? When, when people ask such questions as, why did God heal this person or not this person? Or why does some get to live to 100 but some only 30? Why does this happen? Are these not difficult questions? There's a great verse that helps me with that. That's fine as Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord's. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, here's the thing. God knew what he was doing. Jesus Christ knew what he was doing with Lazarus. He waited two days because he knew he wanted to wait for Lazarus to be fully dead and in the tomb for four days before he resurrected him. He did that for the glory of God. See, sometimes we forget. We think that God only gets glory through our lives. But do you know that God gets glory even when we pass away? Brother and sister, do you know that when you die and you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you can leave a testimony behind that affects the people who are behind you for generations to come? God just doesn't use our lives. He can use our death to glorify him. I don't know why sometimes he heals and sometimes he doesn't, but I do know his thoughts are higher than my own. I know his ways are right and mine aren't. I know he is so smart and so loving, and I trust in the the characteristics of God. I trust in who he is, that God is love, that God is light. I trust in him. So I can't explain why some get healed and some don't. But I can go back to that first point, and I can remember that death does not defeat us. So if God calls home Somebody I dearly love, that's not defeat. Oh, I might not like it. It might be hard on me, but it can still be victory. He waited for two days. He waited. And here's the thing. Do you think Martha and Mary were excited about how he waited? Would you be excited? No, they were disappointed. They were sad. In fact, look at verse 28. In verse 28, as he's talking to Martha and Mary. After she, me and Martha, said this, she went back and called to her sister Mary after Jesus had showed up. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her Notice how quickly she got up and went out. They followed, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn. When Mary reached the place where Jesus saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Notice a couple of really awesome things about Mary here. First of all, she knew the Lord, and she knew who Jesus Christ was. And she said, hey, if you would just show up, Lord, he would have never died. Have you ever prayed that? Lord, if you would just heal. Lord, if you would just take away. Lord, if you would just do, then it would be done. Have you ever prayed that? I have. Many times. Many times I prayed, Lord, 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 you could do this. Lord, you could do this. Lord, you could do this. But he didn't. I feel for Mary. I've been in her place. Look what happened in verse 33. When Jesus saw her weeping, And the Jews who had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Really cool thing happens. Mary comes and she's heart wrenched about her brother Lazarus who died. And so Mary throws herself at Jesus' feet and said, if you would have been here, you could have healed him. God, you could have done something about this, she's saying. And he looks at her in her grief, in her pain. And he's heartbroken for her. In fact, look what happens next. It says he was heartbroken. He saw this weeping. Come and see the Lord, they replied. Look at verse 35, the shortest verse in all the Bible. Jesus what? Let's pause for a second because if you gather nothing else, I, I gather this. Jesus, we know the rest of the story, is right about to resurrect Lazarus. He knows this. 
In the previous verses, he talks about to his disciples about going to resurrect Lazarus. He tells them plainly, hey, he's sleeping. And they're like, oh, he's just sleeping. He said, no, he's really dead, but I'm going to resurrect him. He knows plainly exactly what he's going to do. Part of the reason he waited two days was to make sure Lazarus passed. He waited for Lazarus to pass. And why did he do that? But then here what happens when he shows up. And Mary and Martha are full of tears and their lives are wrecked. And these Jews are there mourning with them. He looks at them and he weeps. He doesn't weep because he's worried about Lazarus. He doesn't weep because Lazarus is gone. He weeps because he sees the emotions and the brokenness of his friends and it moves him. Brother and sister, do you hear this this morning? That God sees into your lives. He sees the brokenness. He sees the pain. He sees the hurt. He sees your need and your pain, and it moves him. Oh, we have a God who's cosmic, a God who's almighty, a God who speaks things into existence, but we also have a God that knows a number of hairs on our head, a God who loves us intimately, a God who sees our pain, and it hurts him. Wow, what a God we serve. He wept. Oh, he knew the end of the story. He knew the joy that was coming. He knew the victory. But even though he is the victory, he feels for us when we're in pain. Does that make you feel any better? It sure does me. To know that God's not some cosmic being that just spins the world and takes his hands off and doesn't care. That's not God at all. No, our God looks, looks into our lives, our worries, our stresses, our hurts, our losses, and it moves his heart. In fact, that's the very reason he sent himself. Christ came to die. See, there's a great verse. It's in Revelation. Do you know when we get to heaven, it says he's going to wipe away every tear? No more death, no more crying, no more mourning. That's what he wants for us. And so while we're here on this earth and we're stuck in this brokenness, it moves him. He's heartbroken for you. But here's the thing. Like I said, he's still the resurrection. So you go back a few verses Go back, if you will. Go back to verse 21. Look at what 21 says. Lord, Martha had said, this is just before, said to Jesus, if you had been here, my my brother would have not died. But I know that even now God can give you whatever you want. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And then hear what Jesus said. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection of life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She says, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Listen, Jesus makes no bones about it. He's moved by their emotion, but he says, hey, guess what? I feel your pain. I feel your hurt, but I am the resurrection of life. Anyone who dies in me, anyone who has a relationship with me, even though their bodies will die, they will not die. They will live forever because I am victorious, he says, because I am the resurrection of life. Brother and sister, if you know Jesus Christ, even though your body gives way, your soul will not you will get to go to heaven for all eternity with the light of life with his God. Is that not great news? That's great news. And not only that, but we reunited with our loved ones and we'll get to see those other believers in Jesus Christ. And we get to stay up there forever in that perfect place. Oh, listen, I can't explain why God heals sometimes and doesn't sometimes. I can't explain why some live to 30 and 100. I'm not about to. His ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are higher than mine. But guess what? I do know that he says, hey, this world is heartbreaking, and I feel your pain, and I weep for you, but don't give way because I am victorious. I am the life of light. I am eternal, and if you believe in me, you will be resurrected. Yeah! Yeah! I mean, yeah. Doesn't that make all the challenges, all the heartbreak, all the loss just a little easier to bear? We have a God who knows our pain, who loves us, who weeps for us. But as he weeps for us, he doesn't weep for us because he doesn't know what to do. He weeps for us because he doesn't want us to hurt because he knows in the end he's going to remove all the hurt. Man, we have a good God. We have a good God, do we not? So look what happens in verse 38. 
Look at that resurrection. Go down Thursday. I said, Jesus, once more deeply moved. We move Jesus with how we feel. He came to the tomb. It was in a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by the time there's a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Let's pause for a second. Listen, Martha just said, yes, I know you're the Messiah. I know you're Lord. But then in her humanity, when he rolls away the stone, she's like, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Do we ever do that? Yeah, I know God's eternal. Yeah, I know he can heal. Yeah, I know that. Then something happens. We're like, wait, wait, wait. But look what God does. She said, there's a bad odor. Verse 40. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out with his hands and feet wrapped in strips of linen, a cloth around his face. Jesus said to him, take off those cloths and let them go. Woo! How awesome is that? Jesus said, open that grave. He said, come on out, Lazarus. And he came out. He was dead. He'd been dead. He'd been in the tomb for four days. He was supposed to be stunk. It's be stunk. <laughs> He's supposed to be stunk. Look that up in your dictionary. He was supposed to be stinky, dead. There was no hope. And Jesus said, come on out. Come on out. Brother and sister, this is a prime example of how we go through life in that roller coaster of human end. And that humanity, oftentimes we have ups and downs, we lose loved ones, and, and we have hardships, and, and we doubt God, and we have wonders, and, and we're on this roller coaster, and we're like, what if, what if, God, can't you? But God's standing here the whole time and said, I am the resurrection. I am victorious. And that never changes. See, whether you lost a loved one this year, whether you have a hardship, whether you're dealing with this thing called a pandemic, whatever you are in life, God sees your pain, he knows your pain, and he weeps for you because he loves you. But he doesn't weep because he doesn't have the answers. He weeps because you're brokenhearted, and he is the answer. And he looks at you and he says, I am the resurrection, I am the life, I am the answer to this life. Choose me. And then one day, when we go to be with him, he's going to look out and say, now you, come out that grave. Come to be with me in paradise forever. And I wipe away those tears. And there's no pain or mourning or crying. Come with me, my child, and spend forever. Woo! God is good. All the time. we got to be reminded of that. We need each other to be reminded of that. Because just as Mary and Martha, we're human, are we not? We'll have doubts. We'll have fears. We'll question. That's okay. God is big enough to handle it all. I've shared it before. But one of the greatest lessons I learned is, you know, especially early on, I thought God just wanted all the good stuff in my life. Just my praise and all my happiness and my rejoicing. You know, that's not true. God wants everything in your life. He wants you to turn over your doubts to him, your fears, your worries, your anxieties. He says, give it all over to me. Give everything you have to me so I can be your Lord. So maybe you're battling with worry or, or dread or, or sadness or all kind of emotions. Give it to God. He sees it. He knows you. And then he says, and I'm the resurrection. I've got that for you. I've got it beat. Now, I might not beat it in the way or in the time you think on this planet, but I've got it beat for all eternity. That's good news. Is that good news to you this morning? That's good news. God loves you. God wants to comfort you. He sees your pain. And God wants to let you live with him forever. Now let me ask you, have you settled that with Jesus? Have you accepted him as Lord in life? See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way you get that eternity of peace, the only way you get that eternity of hope, that healing, is through Jesus Christ. Have you accepted him? If you haven't, don't leave this place until you do. 
Maybe you have, and maybe you're just like Mary and Martha, and this year's battered you up a little bit, and you're a little, little overwhelmed or doubtful. You're welcome to come to the altar or pray where you are. Ask God just to remind you that he sees your pain. Help God to remind you that he cares about your pain. Maybe you're looking for a church home where you can gather together and have people to help you and remind you. Love to talk about that to you during the invitation. But the greatest verse in that passage, to me, is the shortest verse. Jesus wept. Say, Jesus wept. He cares for us. He cares for us. Jesus cares for you. Let that sink in. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for today. I thank you for this incredible passage of Lazarus. And, and God, I, I got to be honest, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of like Mary and Martha. I kind of think, God, you could have done this. God, you could have done this. But God, I have to be reminded your ways are higher. Your thoughts are higher. And so God, help me trust in who you are, in your love, in your light, in your sovereignty, if you're eternity. God, help me to rely on you. Help me know that, God, you see the pain in my life, God, that you see the pain in all our lives. And, God, it breaks your heart for us. But, God, you're not brokenhearted because you don't know the answer, God. You're brokenhearted because you are the answer. And sometimes we don't choose to follow that. So, God, help us. Be mindful of your love. Be mindful that you know what's going on in our lives. Be mindful that, God, you are the resurrection. You have won. Death has no victory. That, God... You have won. Help us know that. Help it bring us comfort and strength. Help us know that we need to share that with others who are going through hardships. You wept because you care for us that much. But that care was shown in such a way when you came, clothed yourself in humanity, died on the cross, and was resurrected so that this brokenness and this pain and this sadness we feel won't be eternal, but God, you will along with us at your side. God, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand. God sees it. He sees your pain. He does. Even though you try not to show it to anybody else, even though you try to be strong and hide it, he sees your pain. It moves his heart. That's why he died for you. Be open with that pain to him. Ask him to wash over you with his presence and his love and his healing. And hold on. The resurrection's coming. Let's pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for being a God who cares so intimately about us, who sees our need, who knows our pain, and is moved by it. What a God you are. And not just a God who's moved by our pain, but a God who has an answer to our pain. That's that eternity through your Son. God, we thank you. I ask you to continue to be with these families 
who've lost loved ones. I ask, Lord, you be that comfort and strength. Remind them of the hope. Let them come to you with open hearts. Be with those who are facing sickness right now. Or Alan, I know he's in, uh, probably facing another surgery here today. Be with him. Be with those facing financial hardship. Ah, there's so many needs. And we don't have it all together. And we don't have the answers. But you do. You are the resurrection. You're the life. You're the Messiah. Be our Lord. Let us be your children. We choose you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us at Malzahn Baptist Church. Join us again next week for live worship.